What is up guys and welcome back to another YouTube tutorial. My name is Moabi and in today's video, I will be talking more about virtual machines and also Hyper-V. So let's get started. Virtual machines allow you to run different operating systems or multiple instances of the same operating system on a single physical machine by virtualizing the hardware resources. Hyper-V is a virtualization platform from Microsoft that helps create and manage virtual machines. So before we begin, here are key terms for you to note. Hypervisor. A hypervisor is a software that creates and manages virtual machines. There are two types of hypervisors, which is type one hypervisor and type two hypervisor. A type one hypervisor is installed on the hardware and can share hardware resources directly to the virtual machines. And there are a number of type one hypervisors, but for our tutorials, I'm only going to mention two hypervisors because those are the two hypervisors that I will be using throughout my tutorials, which is Hyper-V and also Proxmox. A type two hypervisor is installed on an operating system as a software. A type two hypervisor has to borrow resources from the operating system. And there are a number of type two hypervisor examples, but for this tutorial, I'm going to mention only one hypervisor that I will be using as a type two hypervisor, which is VirtualBox. Another key term for you to note is guest operating system. This is the operating system running inside the virtual machine. This can be your Windows operating systems or Linux systems. And the last keyword I want you guys to take note of is host operating system. This is the operating system of the physical machine in this case, Windows. So now that we have the notes out of the way, I want to show you guys how to install Hyper-V on your server. To install Hyper-V, we have to open Server Manager. So to open Server Manager, click on your Start menu, then click Server Manager. Now in your Server Manager, I want you guys to click on Manage. And under Manage, you will see the Add Rules and Features button. Click on that, and this will open up the Add Rules and Features wizard. To learn more about how to install rules and features on your server, check out the link in the description below, which focuses on how to install rules and features on your server. So for this demonstration, in the Before You Begin page, I'm going to click on Next. Once you click Next, you will see Select Installation Type. I'm going to leave the role-based or feature-based installation as default and then click on Next. Now you will see Select Destination Server. So I want to install the Hyper-V role on this server and I'm going to leave everything as default again and then click on Next. And after you click Next, you will see Select Server Roles. In this window, this is where we need to select our Hyper-V role. So I'm going to check the box next to Hyper-V and after you check the box, a pop-up window pops up. And in this window, there are more features for us to install for our Hyper-V role. So now I'm going to click on the button, Add Features. And after I press the Add Features button, I get error message window. And in this window, there's a message that says, the validation process found problems on the server to which you want to install features. The selected features are not compatible with the current configuration of your selected server. Click OK to select different features. So below this message, you will see the validation results and the results are as follows. Hyper-V cannot be installed because virtualization support is not enabled in the BIOS. So we need to restart our server and in our BIOS options, we need to enable the virtualization support feature for our computer. So I'm going to click on OK and then click on Cancel. Close our server manager, click on your start menu, click on the power button, and then select restart. Once you click restart, you will see a pop-up window with a message, choose a reason that best describes why you want to shut down this computer. So I'm going to click on other unplanned drop-down menu. And in this menu, I just want you guys to click on other planned. Then click on continue. So as the computer is restarting, I'm going to click on the button delete. 
because that is the option that allows me to enter the BIOS menu. For your computer, it may be a different button. All you have to do to find out which button allows you to go into your BIOS, check with your manufacturer of your computer. So in my BIOS menu, I'm going to click on the button Exit or Advanced Mode. Now in this window, I'm going to click on Advanced Mode. So under Advanced Mode, I'm going to select the tab Advanced. And under Advanced, I'm going to select CPU Configuration. And then at the bottom, I see Intel Virtualization Technology. And next to that is the option Disabled. So I need to enable this option. So I'm going to click on the option and then select Enabled. This will enable the virtualization technology that the server needs in order to install Hyper-V as a feature on our server. So for your computer, you will have to check with your manufacturer on how to enable this virtualization technology. So now that I have selected the option Enabled, I'm going to select the button Exit. And in the Exit window, I'm going to click on the button Save Changes and Reset. And then you'll see another pop-up window that says Save Configuration and Reset. I'm going to select Yes. This will turn off my computer and then restart the machine. As soon as my computer is back online, I will jump into my remote desktop connection and then we will continue with the video. Alrighty guys, please note, for that part of the video, I had to switch off my computer and then use my local machine in order to show you how to enable your virtualization technology for your computer. Alrighty guys, now that we are back on our server, and we know that we have enabled the virtualization technology for our computer. Let's try and install our Hyper-V role again and see the changes. So in your server manager, click on manage, then click on add roles and features. This will open up the add roles and features wizard. And in the add roles and features wizard, you will see a before you begin page. And I'm going to skip through this and click on the button next. Once you click next, you will see select installation type. The role based or feature based installation option has been selected. So I'm going to leave it as default and then click on next. Once you click next, you will see select destination server. I want to install the Hyper-V role on this server. So I'm also going to leave this option as default and then click on next. Now we will see the select server roles. And in this window, we are going to select Hyper-V. And once you check the box, again, you will see a pop-up window with more features for you to install for your Hyper-V. So now that we have enabled our virtualization technology for our computer, let's see what happens now when we click the button Add Features. The option has been selected. I'm going to select the button Next. And once you click Next, you will see a Select Features window. And in this window, I'm not going to select any features from this window. So I'm going to click on the button Next. Now once you click Next, you will see Hyper-V. And in this window, it's just information about Hyper-V. You can read more information about Hyper-V. And once you're done, you can click the button Next. Now once you click Next, you will see Create Virtual Switches. Virtual machines require virtual switches to communicate with other computers. After you install this role, you can create a virtual machine and attach them to a virtual switch. So virtual switches allow your virtual machines to communicate with other computers on your network or externally. And if you look below, you will see network adapters. And below that, you will see your network adapter for your computer. Now, you can select this button to create a virtual switch straight from this window. And if you look below, you will see a message that says, we recommend that you reserve one network adapter for remote access to this server, to reserve a network adapter, do not select it for use with a virtual switch. So this message just informs you that once you check the box next to Ethernet 2, your server will get a new IP address and you will not be able to log into your server using your IP address. So for this part of the video, I am not going to select Ethernet 2 because I still want to stay connected to my remote session. I will show you how to create a virtual switch using your Hyper-V Manager. So for now, I'm going to leave the box unchecked and then click on Next. 
Once you click next, you will see virtual machine migration. And below that, you will see a message that says, Hyper-V can be configured to send and receive live migrations of virtual machines on this server. Configuring Hyper-V now enables any available network on the server to be used for live migration. If you want to dedicate a specific network for live migration, use Hyper-V settings after you install this role. So, for this demonstration, I am not going to worry much about live migration. Leave everything as default and then click on the button Next. Next, we see default stores and in this window, this is where we need to select the location where our virtual machines will be saved. So for this part of the video, I want us to go ahead and create a location where we are going to save our virtual machines. I don't want us to use the default location that Microsoft provides for us. So to create a new location for our Hyper-Vs, let's click on File Explorer. And in your File Explorer, click on this PC. And after you click this PC, click on Local Disk C. And in our local disk, this is where I want us to create a folder for our virtual machines to be stored and located. So to create a folder, you can click on the button Home and then select New Folder. So I'm going to name my folder Hyper-V Server. Then click Enter. And now I want you guys to go inside your folder. So double click on your folder. And inside your folder, I want you guys to create two folders, one called Virtual Hard Disk, and the other folder, I want you guys to name it Virtual Machines Config. So I'm going to click on Home, and then select New Folder, and then name your folder Virtual Hard Disk. And then to create another folder, right click anywhere inside your window, and then select New, then click Folder. Name this folder Virtual Machines Config and then click on Enter. The reason why I created these two folders is because as you are configuring your server, you need to have a location for your hard disk and also your Virtual Machines configuration. So let's go back to our server manager and then click on the Add Rules and Features window. Now in this window, you will see default location for virtual hard disk files. We just created this file, so I'm going to click on the button Browse. Now in this window, we need to go and select the folders that we just created. So I'm going to click on this PC and then click on Local Disk C because this is where I created the Hyper-V Server folder. I'm going to select the folder and then click the folder Virtual Hard Disk. Then click OK. And if you take note, you will see the path where our virtual hard disk files will be created. If you take a look below, you will see default location for virtual machines configuration files. This is the default location where all these configuration files will be saved. I want us to change this file because we have created our own file. So click on Browse. And again, go back to the folder where you created the virtual machines config folder. In my case, I'm going to click on this PC and then click on Local Disk C. Under Local Disk C, I'm going to click on Hyper-V Sev. And in this folder, I'm going to select Virtual Machines Config folder because this is the folder that I want to change to. Now, once I'm done, I'm going to click on OK. And now I've updated the default location for virtual hard disk files and also virtual machine configuration files. So I recommend that you guys create folders and change the location where your files are going to be stored. So once you change the location of where your files are going to be stored, click on the button Next. And now we get the Confirm Installation Selections window. And in this window, you will see a summary about the roles and features that you are about to install. So like always, I'm going to check the box, restart this destination server automatically if required. And once you do that, you will see a pop-up window that informs you that if a restart is required, this server restarts automatically without additional notifications. Do you want to allow this automatic restart? I'm going to click on the button Yes. And now I'm going to select the button Install. The process 
for installing the Hyper-V role on our server will start and I will wait for the server to finish up and if it needs a restart, it will restart automatically and then we will test if the Hyper-V manager has been installed on the server or not. So guys, in my case, my server had to restart to install the Hyper-V row. So after the restart, I logged into my server remotely. And right after you log back into your server, you will see the installation progress window. And in this window, your server was just completing the process for installing Hyper-V. If all went well, you will see a message that says, installation succeeded on your server. So I'm going to click on the button close. And now to open Hyper-V Manager, click on Tools. And under Tools, locate Hyper-V Manager and then select the option. This will open up the Hyper-V Manager console. And if you see this window on your computer, that means you have successfully installed Hyper-V Manager on your server. So with that being said, that concludes our video for today. I just wanted to explain more about virtual machines and also show you the challenges that you may encounter if you haven't enabled the virtualization technology for your computer in the BIOS settings. So guys, that is it for today. If you have a comment or suggestion, you can leave it in the comment section below. Share the video with a friend or two. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. And lastly, click on the subscribe button for more and I will see you guys on the next video. And remember, each one, teach one.